regard to al-Qaeda, frankly, uh, I find the evidence of Iran supporting al-Qaeda to be unpersuasive and illogical, since uh, al-Qaeda are Salafi jihadis that consider Shiites to be apostates uh, and free to be murdered. So it doesn't quite seem logical uh, that a Shiite theocracy would be sponsoring or aiding people who are, in fact, uh, uh, who consider Shiites to be apostates and uh, who, in fact, with their car bomb attacks, have killed tens of thousands of Shiites in, in Iraq. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, anyhow, the, um, uh, the, uh, the irony, uh, it is the, the Bush administration that has, uh, I've argued, given Iran, in Iraq, uh, its greatest strategic gain since the Treaty of 1630, uh, of Khazari Treaty of 1639 established the boundaries between the two countries, the boundary between the Ottoman and the uh, Persian empires, between uh, the Shiite ruled world and the Sunni ruled world. Uh, and uh, to justify military action against Iran on the grounds of its influence in Iraq is basically, uh, and to have this kind of rhetoric, uh, is to be attacking Iran for George Bush's mistake. Uh, and incidentally, you have to listen to the Iranians. They strongly deny that they're trying to undermine the American project in Iraq, and specifically that they're trying to undermine the Iraqi government. Uh, they basically say, uh, uh, why would we do that? We support this government more than anybody else, and of course, that's true. They are the people that the U.S. had supported for uh, decades. Um, now, on the nuclear issue, uh, the, um, the I think it's, one has to be very clear about what the national intelligence estimate uh, says and means. Uh, it, it says that Iran stopped work on nuclear weapons program in 2003. But it does not say that Iran is not acquiring uh, the technology to make fissile material. Uh, and in fact, it is uh, perfectly consistent with having a, uh, a, 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 the desire to acquire nuclear weapons technology for Iran not to be working on nuclear weapons design and, and uh, the such at the present time, uh, but to be working on acquiring the fissile materials because the difficulty in making nuclear weapons does not come from weaponizing the, creating the weapon, it comes from having the material that blows up. Uh, but I, I agree with the underlying assessment. Uh, so I think there is a, there, the need does not mean this issue has gone away. In fact, uh, it remains. But I agree with the underlying assessment that Iran is a rational actor, uh, and that there, are, that there are good reasons why Iran <coughs> may not wish to pursue a, uh, acquiring a nuclear weapon, even as it acquires the ability to make fissile material, you know, and probably it will enrich uranium too the three to five percent, but once you've mastered that, you can do it to the 90 percent for weapon. It, it may not do that, and it may not continue with the weapons design, although it could, once it's mastered the uh, uh, uranium enrichment process and it has those centrifuges, it could, in a rather short period of time, weaponize if it chose to. But I think there's some reasons why it may not choose to weaponize. Uh, one is, of course, relations with the threat from the United States, uh, relations with the Europeans, but also the specific strategic environment in which Iran finds itself. Uh, right now, it is the dominant power in, the, in, the, in, the, in its own region uh, by virtue of its population and uh, size of territory and military, competing with some very sparsely populated countries on the southern side of the Gulf. But I think that there's a, a very good chance that if Iran had nuclear weapons, Saudi Arabia would acquire them, maybe UAE, uh, some of the smaller Gulf states. Uh, and then uh, Iran, the, the strategic balance actually could shift against uh, Iran. 
Uh, so there, there are some reasons that Iran uh, may not uh, wish to uh, go ahead and uh, acquire nuclear weapons. Now, uh, well, the, the, let me make a second point, which is I think that it is possible militarily to strike at Iran's nuclear facilities and to keep Iran for the indefinite peri indefinite period of time from acquiring nuclear weapons uh, by military means if you're prepared to have sustained bombing. Now, I think it's probably true that we don't know where all of Iran's facilities that are relevant to nuclear weapons are located. Uh, uh, it may be that some of them are very deep in the ground, that they're not going to be attackable by conventional weapons, and I think it's insane to talk about using nuclear weapons. Uh, and even if Rudy Giuliani becomes president, he wouldn't actually do that in spite of what he says. Um, but the simple fact is that people are not likely to go to work in facilities that are being bombed. So your engineers and scientists and construction workers aren't going to work uh, where the places where they're being attacked. But the problem with the military option is the consequences. It's what Iran can do to us. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, cutting off its own oil production, do damage, great damage to its own economy, but uh, it would have an extraordinary impact on the price of oil. Uh, uh, disrupting traffic through the Strait of Hormuz, there's a debate about how, whether it could completely close it or not. And it can retaliate against US forces in Iraq. Because guess what? It's Iran's allies that are basically in control of Iraq. Uh, and so uh, it, it does have a, a, the capability uh, to um, retaliate. And that leads me uh, uh, to the question of whether it's possible to have some kind of deal with Iran. Well, the, in, in 2003, May 2003, uh, now there was a different president in Iran at the time, uh, but uh, at that time, uh, the Swiss ambassador, Tim Guldeman, whom I knew actually fairly well when we worked together in the Balkans, he was the head of the OSCE mission in Croatia, very capable of doing that, presented to the Bush administration a paper for a deal. And the basic proposal at the time was that Iran would have full transparency on its nuclear program, uh, it would um, stop supporting uh, 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 radical Palestinian groups that were making attacks inside Israel. Uh, note that doesn't ex that that language excluded the West Bank. Uh, uh, that it would support a non-religious government in Iraq, uh, and uh, that it would cooperate against Al Qaeda. And what it asked for in return was uh, basically an end to US hostility, a lifting of the unilateral sanctions, um, uh, and US uh, support in dealing with the Mujahideen-i Kalk, which is a uh, uh, anti-Iranian or anti-Mullah uh, Iranian opposition group that's been based in Iraq, supported by Saddam Hussein. That is also on the US State Department list of terrorist organizations. Now at that time, in the glow of mission accomplished, May 2003, the response of the Bush administration was to say, we don't negotiate with evil, and to uh, reject the Iranian deal. And unfortunately, our position in 2009 is much weaker, 2007, and I'm afraid it will be in 2009 when the new president takes office, is much weaker than it was in 2003. And uh, Hatami is gone, replaced by Ahmadinejad, although I, I can't help but note that when Hatami was there, the neocons all argued that, oh, well, the president of Iran doesn't have any power, it's really the supreme leader, and now they're saying he's, you know, incredibly powerful when it's the guy they don't like, but okay. Um, 